which is a very successful example, which is in France, this, this farm here, this farm is in France. And uh, it, it is very successful in terms of, uh, uh, it is financially sustainable. And scientists have gone to the farm to study it, and they found that they can sequester carbon six, six times better than a normal woodland, right? So I show you a picture of this farm here in, in France. Oh. So it's like this, they do have greenhouse because while they have cold winters, so they do need some greenhouses, but most of their crops are outdoor. And uh, you can check the name of this, uh, of this farm and, and learn more about this farm. So I think this is, this is an example that we can get inspiration from. So Hanqing, I think I, uh, I have finished what I need to cover and uh, maybe we can open up for people to ask questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Tang. Um, now for the audience, we can actually proceed on to the pigeon hole and we can ask our questions there. So hang on while I share my screen. Yep, so we have one question so far. Um, oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, so, so you can see the question, right? Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, I can remember that place. It is in someone's garden. Their house is big. Their garden is very, very big. The size of their garden is about three or four times the size of a basketball court. Imagine that. And the house was built in 1930s. So it's almost 90 years old and the garden, the soil has not been damaged, right? Of course, they would engage uh, landscape contractors to mow their grass. And of course, there will be some rubbish after that. Other than that, there's not much rubbish. The soil is good. They have quite a number of mature big fruit trees like rambutan uh, and a few other trees. So the soil is really, really good. I, I really didn't need to do much uh, on the soil and already the soil is giving good results. So, and uh, uh, GCP, the soil is also very good, right? Because I think uh, it's been a park for, for many years. It was left alone. So, uh, so the soil uh, slowly is improving. The, one of the worst places uh, is the place I'm now farming in is a uh, school garden uh, because it was a garden for a long time but a few years ago uh, they, they were building a extension near the garden so they dump a lot of uh, construction rubbish onto the garden soil and the contractor just uh, put a thin layer of, of soil on top and then grow grass on top. So it looks nice and tidy. But actually when I, when I dug the soil, there's a lot of those uh, broken tiles, broken bricks in the soil. It's quite tough for me to remove all this before I can grow food. So, uh, oh, plants with the most flavor. Well, it's hard to say because different, different plants would have uh, different flavors. But now the fruits from, uh, from the um, uh, NGO, uh, ground up initiatives, I think they are very good because they were grown naturally. And nobody, it, it, I have heard that they were planted there, the, the fruit trees there in GUI were planted there several decades ago by, by Taiwan people. They helped to plant those uh, trees and, and then the trees grew and grew and grew and every year they, they, they give you harvest. I've tried, I've tried the mangosteen, I've tried the uh, rambutan and so on. They're really nice and when I check the bricks value, they are generally higher 
than those I could buy from markets. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, we have one, uh, we have two questions actually. So the first one will be, could you share instances uh, where soy sequestering and food farming can come in place um, in land scarce area? Thanks, could you share in? Oh yes, yeah, I and, think, hmm. think about what, uh, many people say that Singapore, Singapore is so small, uh, we don't have land for farming. But what I think is being small is, a, is an advantage actually. So we could have small farms all around Singapore. We have so many green spaces. We, have, we still have so many green spaces and, and empty green spaces. We can convert, we can transform some of these uh, green spaces into productive, small, natural farm, right? So I live in Bishan area, so I, I can see already four or five opportunities if we are, uh, uh, if government um, creates conditions for groups of people to utilize the, the, the green spaces. So right now, what happened to the uh, green spaces is that uh, every month, uh, the contractor, uh, the landscape contractor will send their teams of workers to mow the grass. Very noisy, it's polluting and leaving behind those uh, you know, those plastic ribbons from the mowing machine. So this is very uh, uh, footprint intensive. It leaves behind a lot of footprint. So if we can utilize some of these green spaces and transform them into small natural gardens, food garden, that would be good. I see opportunities. And uh, okay, let me look at this. How do we get soil on the agenda for the government well, we need to uh, convince them because, well, actually many people, when I talk to them, they strongly believe that to, to grow enough food to feed the population, we need large scale intensive industrial farming, like, like big factories churning out their, their products. This is the only way to do that. But there are many issues. Although we may be able to get the yield, but it will need a lot of input, it will produce a lot of pollution, it will produce a lot of waste. And the farm in France is a good demonstration that using natural farming, permaculture, uh, it can produce good amount, high quality food, at the same time helping the environment. And I saw one of their interviews uh, online and the farm owner said that, okay, for them, uh, for each hectare of land, they would employ two people, two farmers. In America, they only need to employ one worker for every 20 hectares. So, well, it depends on how you look at it. People say that, see, the farming practices, the large scale farm is so much more uh, effective. We don't need many people, right? Uh, because they're using a lot of machines and automation and so on. So this is the advantage they see, right? They don't need a lot of manpower, but the farm owner in France said that, well, because we em employ two people per hectare, we are creating job opportunity, right? So this is good for the society also. And, and people working in a farm like that uh, in France, they, they, they enjoy working in a farm, right? It's not like working in a, in a factory. Every day you do the same routine work. In the farm, you are interacting with nature, you're interacting with plants and, and urban wildlife and so on. I, I don't know whether Will is here in this uh, meeting with us. Uh, Will, one of the founders of Polo Farm, I visited his farm about half a, years, half a year ago and I was impressed. 
by the workers there. Not, I cannot call them just workers. They're actually farmers. You know, farmers and, and farm workers are different. Farm workers just go there, carry out the routine work every day. But farmers really need to observe, interact with the, the plants and the, and the animals there. And so I, I visited Fellow Farm. The workers there were happy because they are not just workers there. Uh, they, they are well cared for. They got bonus from, uh, from, from, from the farm and they got holidays. They are well treated. Whereas um, these people previously employed by other farms, oh, they, they, are, they are not so well treated and every day they have to, uh, to use chemical pesticides and so on. Their health is affected. Whereas in Folo Farm, I, I could see that they're happy uh, they can actually discuss with, uh, uh, with, with Will and others on, on the approach of growing food. Yeah, if, if Will is here, maybe you can talk a bit about this. So which are the questions? Uh, do you think adopting the method of growing food naturally would help meet Singapore's? Well, this question here, I don't think uh, Natural farming alone can meet Singapore's 30 by 30 vision. No, but certainly it will help. Well, uh, I, 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 I have not calculated, but I don't know, but I would guess we can help in about 5%, 5%, 10%. What I hope to see happen is that, like in Bishan, in Bishan where I live, if I have uh, three or four, uh, farms nearby, then I, instead of going to the supermarket to buy food, I can go to those farms. Because uh, it's very important to know how your food is grown. I have seen many farms, uh, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and so on. And some of these are organic farms. They, they, they are certified organic. But when I go, when I went there and see, I, I, I wouldn't like to buy their vegetables because I could see their practices, right? Organic farm can be quite damaging to the environment also, right? They, well, to get that certification, organic certification, they just need to technically abide by their rules and regulations, that's all, right? You, a, a truly organic farm, the farmers there must have the heart to take care of the environment and the soil and the wildlife there, because they would help uh, to improve the quality of the vegetables and fruits being grown there, right? It, it, because they are not products like, like a handphone, like uh, uh, TV sets and so on. The food that we eat, the vegetables, the fruits, they are alive. They cannot be manufactured. They have to be grown with care. Yeah. 